Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to Jim's 5am club. I invite you to join me on this journey to discovery where I can guarantee you one thing that I can teach you more about more things that matter than all of your contacts, all of your social contacts on Facebook and anybody else that you've ever met in your life. I'm getting close now to 1300 vlogs in English where we've gone through and uh, presented um, over a thousand book summaries. And that's a lot. That's a lot of information. That's a lot of books. And that's a lot of OPE, other people's experiences that we've been able to document, talk about, and hopefully for those who have been on the journey with me during this period, uh, it's been enough to incorporate into our lives and change our lives in a positive way. What I'd like to do today is go through another book summary, yet another book summary. Just amazing how I've come across so many book summaries and I've been able to uh, deliver, present, and uh, at the same time highlight and showcase the beauty of this magnificent city of Sydney. Today's book summary is entitled The Three Minute Rule by an author known as Brent Pinvidic. Brent, or Brant, sorry, Brant Pinvidic is a, uh, a trainer in selling presentations and pitching and he's going to offer us a few tips, a few skills that we can possibly use to improve our pitch performance. So um, this book's all about becoming more effective in our communication style. And Brandt, Brandt's key message from his book is that to be more effective at communicating you basically need to say less to get more. A very simple message about saying less to be able to get more. And um, basically the three minute rule in a nutshell is, um, is that we, we need to be able to say everything about our business, our product, or our service and it must be clearly, concisely and accurately conveyed in three minutes or less. So it's all about getting the message across with as few words as possible, as quickly as possible because science tells us and our experience tells us that you don't really have all that much time before people switch off um, and it's based on the way we're wired and how humans make decisions because we need to make quick decisions and we've always needed to make quick decisions in order to manage and to foster our survival. Um, we've, been, we, we've been taught or we've needed to be, to, uh, to, to be able to um, actualise decisions very, very quickly. Uh, because we, the longer you took um, in our, I guess in our ancient times, in our development times, the longer you took to make a decision, the greater the risk you faced. So we needed to make quick, very, very quick decisions uh, for fight, flight, um, procreate, eat, all of those things. We needed to do it quickly because the longer you spent at the waterhole, the longer you're spent in a particular place, then the greater the chances were that you're going to be attacked or eaten by a wild animal or by somebody from another mob or tri tribe. So uh, humans form decisions in specific ways and because of that structure, 
and that need to make those quick decisions, um, we, we have needed to go through and understand what that decision process is. So we need to, con to uh, conceptualise a decision, we need to contextualise and we also need to actualise. So the author here reminds us and brings us brings it top of mind that the first 10 or 20 seconds is when you have a person's yes or no. You know, you don't have to pitch, you don't have to present for an hour or two or 10 or a lifetime to get a person's no. You know, they will have that already decided in their mind, according to this author, in that first 10 or 20 seconds when they meet you. So um, then that is the point, that is the, the sweet spot. That's the invitation that you have to make the greatest impact in that first 10 or 20 seconds. And the author says that basically the longest that you have is three minutes. So the quicker you can get your message across, the quicker your impact, the quicker you will get a yes, hopefully a yes, or most probably a no. So all of those people who think that they can seduce people with their words, with their long sentences, with their long paragraphs, with their long speeches, with their long vlogs, are very much um, I'm kidding themselves. So what you need to do, and what I'm going to try and incorporate into my vlogging style, is to be very, very quick up front, to uh, give the key points, and to uh, lead my audience, or invite my audience, to hang on, stick on, and see if we can get to the end of the vlog. I've looked at a lot of my stats on my vlogs and I don't get too many likes, I don't get too many views, and I don't get too many people hanging on to the end. Even though I think, personally myself, I'm offering a good service. Um, one of the traps that we all fall into is that we talk too much and for too long and we lose our audience early in the piece and once you've lost somebody then chances are they'll, they'll never come back um, or never want to uh, listen to you again. So the author here talks about a style of presentation or of pitching um, where you lead your audience. It's the old school form of state you state something and you um, and prove it. So state and prove is the, the technique that the author talks about. It's where you basically state something that you that you want. Um, say for example, um, you know, do you want to eat whatever you want and lose weight? So what it does is it entices people. It triggers their attention. It peaks their uh, attention span and it gets them to want to stay on and, and uh, be hooked. So it's all about informing people and leading them on a journey where you give them a road map and you lead them to a conclusion, but you lead them to their own conclusion, not the conclusion you want, but hopefully with the questions and with the prompts and with the discussion that you have, they are, are drawn are drawn to a particular conclusion without you having to sell or state the obvious. And the key message, the key call to action to our communication style from this author is simplicity is power, clarity is compelling, and information is value. The author goes on to talk about confidence, and he says that you can't teach confidence you can teach a lot of things, but you can't teach somebody to be confident. Um, you can teach somebody how to pretend to be confident, but that basically is teaching somebody and making somebody a phony. 
and we all know we all know that people can really quickly pick up on a phony pick up on somebody who's bluffing it and uh, they, uh, once they pick up on it then you've lost them for good so the whole thing about confidence from what the author is saying here is that confidence comes from your belief and uh, the belief that you're bringing value to others um, and the bottom line as the author says is that nobody but nobody wants to be sold your children your clients your peers uh, your family your spouse nobody anymore wants to be sold because over the past decade or two the the marketing style um, you know in advertisements on television um, with uh, pyramid selling companies has really put people on alert to being sold and being so oversold so it's very very hard these days to be able to sell anybody on anybody on anything because as we said people see and can see through it they can smell it they can touch it they can feel it they can see it coming a million miles away um, that you're trying to sell them on something and as soon as they feel that you're trying to sell them then they'll put up the barriers they'll put up they'll bring down the shutters and you will have no access to them from that point on and they'll just basically mistrust you and want to steer clear of you from that point on um, because the more you try and convince somebody the more words you try and deliver um, basically is an indication of how confident you are in what you're saying and the more words you incorporate the harder you try the other person can see through it and see that you're less confident in what you're doing because of the volume of words or the amount that you're trying to get your point across so uh, the more you say the less value you deliver is what the author is saying here you know the more you try and convince the more they doubt so it's all about summarizing whatever you do in one or two sentences um, because any more than that people will tune out and uh, a confused mind will always say no so you've got to understand that when you're talking to children when you're talking to uh, work peers uh, whoever you're talking to the more you talk the more you confuse and the more you confuse um, the more they tune out and once they've tuned out very 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 hard according to this author and according to our life experiences as well for them to ever tune back in uh, because as we said and this is a powerful point a confused mind will always but always say no so what we need to be able to do is to get our message across quickly succinctly clearly and without pushing it too much we need to be able to explain things and we need to explain it in a way that leads to engagement you need the other people the person person you're talking to to be engaged and to want to listen to want to go on the journey to want to hear what's coming next because they trust you they um they're um they're uh, they're with you they're they're on the journey with you taking steps with you so um, these these uh, direct marketing techniques this um, you know steak knives um, additional things to try and trick you and, and, and bring you in and that do, do, do not no longer work according to the author and um, And the important message, I guess, the last important message to come out of this book 
is where the author says that if you're in sales or if you're trying to convince somebody, the most important thing you need to do is to filter out quickly, as quickly as you can, the people who are not going to buy, the people who are not in the market. So, you know, talking for too long um, and, and holding people's attention or trying to hold people's attention for too long is wasting both their time and your time. So um, the author talks about here the fire alarm test. You need to um, be able to test as early as possible in your pitch uh, the interest, the genuine interest that the other person has. Um, and not to waste their time because if you're wasting their time you're wasting your time as well. So you're better off um, using that time more effectively to be pitching to people who are going to be more interested in the product that you have and gaining what you have. Now, we are living in a world now where concentration spans are getting smaller and smaller. Um, Twitter, for example, is 140 characters. You need to get your message across in 140 characters or less. Now you've basically got six seconds with um, with uh, YouTube and uh, what's the other one? Um, Instagram. You got six seconds in a video to capture pers a person's attention, and if you don't get that attention, if you don't get that swipe in that first six seconds, then they're not going to listen or watch the rest of your uh, your video. Now we've got the Tinder effect where people have, you know, will look and will immediately, immediately make a decision uh, without having to sit and think about it for, for too long. So you need to get your pitch right and you need to understand that we need to get through to a person and not waste their time and get, get to yes as quickly as possible and if you're not getting to it, you know, in those first few seconds, then you're never going to get there, basically, is the point that the author's making. And the last key point to come out of this book here, the best point of all, is that if you get your pitches right, you need to understand that it will have a, a massive impact on your life. Because the biggest lesson of all is it's not the best product that wins, but it's the best known product. So don't waste your time with lengthy, lengthy introductions. Now get to the point as quickly as possible, because if you don't get to the point as quickly as possible, you will never ever get through to your client, your family, your friends. You'll never be able to get that message through so get to the message, get to the point, get to the price as quickly as possible so that you at least get a chance to continue your message, continue your journey. So years ago, I remember doing a, um, a computer course and part of that computer course was uh, um, a, a communication skills element. And the uh, presenter said, that the best presentations are when you tell somebody what you're going to tell them, you tell them, and then you end up telling them what you've already told them. So the introduction is basically telling them what you're going to tell them. Then you go into the presentation where you tell them, and then you end up summarizing by telling them what you've already told them. And you need to do that quickly. You need to get people swiping right on Tinder, so to speak, and accepting you into their um, decision sphere as early as you can, because if you miss that opportunity, if you miss that uh, those first few minutes, those few, first few seconds, then you've lost them for good. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, it's a Monday, it's overcast. It's uh, still summer, last day of summer. 
and we'll see where it leads us. It's been a very, very wet summer this year, but I look forward to coming to you again from a different place with a different message of empowerment. And as I said, you know, we're, we're closing in on 1300 vlogs. Um, I am probably now the most prolific vlogger in the world on personal development material, on book summaries, and it's something that I love. And I welcome you to share this message, share my YouTube channel with others, um, because it may add some value. Anyway, take care, have a great day, and we'll chat again. Bye for now.